Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am back. It has been a minute since I've been on camera. I have not been well, I've been sick, and I am back, and I'm so excited. For me to come back after being gone for so long, I felt like it was only appropriate for me to turn on the camera, have a get ready with me, and share with you guys where I've been. I have so many products to review and so many reviews to come, but I didn't really wanna come back just jumping right back in. I felt like I owed it to all of you who have supported me for so long to explain where I've been and what's been going on because you guys are a part of my YouTube family. So lots of craziness in my life the last couple weeks. I'm gonna be sharing things that I've never really told you guys. It's not really been a secret, it's just never came up. Um, this is definitely a very chatty get ready with me. I'm gonna be sharing why I've been gone and off the scene and also an upcoming surgery that I'm having. We're just getting into it, it's just, a chill kickback get ready with me everything I use in the video I will link in the description box down below uh, but go ahead get your coffee get ready with me you know put the phone down and get ready whatever it's just gonna be a chill laid-back video which I love so without further ado let's just go ahead and jump straight into the video so it has been a minute since I've been in front of the camera I have so many things that I want to review so many things have happened over the last couple of weeks there would be no better way for me to come back, first video, explain where I've been and what's been going on in my world. So I figured I would just get ready, have a little fun in makeup. I haven't been playing in makeup for a while. Okay, hair is back, maybe. I don't want it to look like a mushroom head. <laughs> you know how it like gets super puffy on top and you're just like, it looks so dumb when it does that. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Oh my gosh, it has been a minute since I've been on camera. I don't even, it's like I'm trying to like, it's so weird. It, it's just, I've missed everyone so much and it's, woo, it's been a lot. Okay, so of course I'm gonna start with my Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream, my absolute favorite. So I'm just gonna get the cat out of the bag where I have been. I have been, I was sick for almost two weeks I got COVID. Yes, COVID got me. First time I got it. I've never had COVID until now. Praise God. <laughs> um, and I was sick. I was a sick girl. I'm so glad that it was not respiratory. So it seems like when people get COVID and it attacks their lungs and the respiratory, that's when they get super sick and go to the hospital. And then it's just this battle. So I am very, very grateful that mine was not respiratory. In fact, it's really weird because I I didn't fully lose my my sense of taste and smell. It, it, things tasted funny, but I didn't lose it. it. It was weird. I did have the vax, so I think hopefully the vax is kind of what helped me not to get the respiratory stuff. It was just the fever, body aches, that kind of stuff. I'm gonna put on some of my Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Falls filter. I love this stuff. Actually, I bought shade 5.5, which is a little bit dark for me, but right now I don't have any fake tan on my face, just my body. So it's almost like using this kind of gives some color to my face. I had the body aches from hell. My hips <laughs> felt like I was in labor. I literally thought I was in labor for about six days. My hips ached so bad. It was like I could feel this like aching sensation from my hips all the way down to my knees and then my kneecaps, oh my gosh. For me, the body aches were the worst. I've never had body aches like that. Well, I can't say never. Um, years ago, I did have the swine flu and I was sick for two straight weeks. Fever, the whole nine yards. In fact, the fever didn't break. I was so dehydrated, I had to go to the hospital and get, um, you know, like an IV and fluids and all that because I was so, so sick. Isn't that dark? I know, it looks a little ridiculous. I don't know if I should be using this color right now, but we'll see. The swine flu for me was the worst. It was absolutely unbearable. Like I was so sick, I did not move for two weeks. 
so I can't say that COVID was the same. Um, you know, I did I mean, I'm sure the, the vaccine helped with that. I started getting better last weekend. And then my kids came to visit, which I was so excited. I hadn't seen them for a while. And so I went into mom mode and got a bunch of food. And we had such a great weekend. And it was so nice to see my kids and just, like, be, you know, that mom that, like, now that my kids have kind of moved, now that my kids have moved out, it's, like, it's so fun having them home and, like, all of us sitting down for dinner. Because that was kind of our thing. We always had dinner around the table. We always had dinner, the four of us, um, together. It was kind of the time that we all came together at during the day. You know, like, days are always so crazy. Since everybody's been gone, I don't have that anymore, right? So the kids are gone, so I don't have those dinners with them that we used to have. I'm going to use this foundation, the Beauty Blender. It's one of my favorites. You guys know I love it. Okay, so back to my stories. Monday was Valentine's Day, so I, you know, we spent the day together. And then um, Tuesday was my husband's birthday. Uh, so we all went out as a family together and went to dinner. And then Wednesday was a hard day for me because that was the two year anniversary of my grandfather's death, which is never an easy, it's a never an easy day. Um, you know how that is. It just is what it is. And look how pretty that foundation is. Oh, I just love it so much. Um, so that day I just was like, there's no way I could get back to filming. You know, I don't want to start filming in like a bad mindset. So then my son um, has decided to move out of his apartment um, and he's moving to San Diego for summer sales. So the, my son's job is he does summer sales. And so he's home for the winter, gone for the summer. So he moved all of his stuff out of his apartment and moved it home. Like, you know, all the things that he needed for his bedroom and all of that. And so he's leaving this weekend. He's moving to San Diego and I'm going to miss him so much. Like, I just love my kids being home. But my daughter's actually thinking about doing summer sales with him. <laughs> and I'm, tr I'm trying to get on board. She's going to be 19 in March, which... It's so crazy to me to think that my baby is 19 years old. So anyway, my son is going to be moving to San Diego. <sighs> so it's going to be interesting. It always is when he leaves me. I'm getting better at letting him go. Um, but with her, it's still kind of, I don't know. Anyway, she won't be moving until her semester is over and it's summer break. Her birthday... My daughter has a very special birthday. Her birthday is 030303. I got to put some lipstick on. It's kind of crazy that her birthday is 030303 because her due date wasn't until April 12th. So she was she was born about five weeks early. And it was really interesting that her she was born on that day. Um, and the number three has kind of been my favorite number from the time I was a little kid. So it's kind of cool that my daughter was born on 030303. But anyway, I bought her a plane ticket to fly out to California, um, to visit with my son and his friends and go to Disneyland and stuff. So she's going to be flying out. We'll spend a couple of, we'll spend the day together before her birthday. Um, and then she will, um fly to California for a couple days, which will be kind of fun for her birthday. But speaking of flights, so every year my husband and my family, we all fly to Florida to visit his family. We stay at our condo in St. Augustine and I've never paid, I mean, flying from Utah to Florida is always like 450 to 500. Like rarely do I find tickets for less than 400. So I was looking, I was just sitting there because I was bored. I'd watched so many um, Housewives. <laughs> I have rewatched the entire series of Beverly Hills Housewives, like from the very beginning. I watched New Jersey from the very beginning and Beverly Hills from the very beginning. I don't know why I was just in that, you know, I need something to do mode. So anyway, I'm sitting there and I am looking at the flights, just wondering like what they are and how much they are. And I found flights to Florida for just under $300. They were like $278 round trip. I was shocked. I could not believe that I found them for that cheap. 
So I went ahead and booked our flights for our Florida trip, which I'm so excited about. I love, love, love our Florida trip. The only thing that's gonna be interesting about this Florida trip is I'm having surgery right before we leave. And I don't even know if I've told you guys about my surgery. I've got so much to tell you guys. Like, this is just gonna be, I'm gonna be telling you everything. This, this video is gonna be a <laughs> full diary, full open up the vault. So I am actually having surgery in May because I am having, uh, oh, I don't even know what they call it. I'm basically having my implants taken out and implant, re like new implants put back in. Before I had children, I was always top heavy. So I had, you know, my bra size before I had children was a 32C, 34D, 32C, 34D, somewhere in there, okay? And then when I had my son, um, they were fine. My breasts were fine. They actually looked really good. But when I had my daughter, you know, she was born five weeks early. <laughs> this was back in 2003 and they brought in, I was at the hospital. Okay. So long kind of story short, when I gave birth to my daughter, I was in my hometown. Okay. And it's a small hospital. Well, she had to be life flighted to a, a NICU. Okay. So that was very traumatic for a new mother to have their newborn baby kind of taken from them. I didn't even get to see her before they life flighted her. So that was a whole deal. Um, I was away from her for five days. I was in full labor, okay? She was breech. I had to have an emergency C-section. And because she was five weeks early, the last lining on her lung had not fully developed. So she needed to be in the NICU. Uh, so they life lighted her to a larger hospital. I was stuck at the hospital, the small hospital, without my baby, which was t horrible. And of course, this is before cell phones, okay? We didn't have cell phones back then. So of course I sent my husband to be with her, and I'm at the I'm at the small hospital by myself. While she was in the NICU, she was struggling with her formula. They could not get the formula, like she couldn't keep it down. And so I was on the phone, I was on the phone with the hospital, the NICU, and I asked the nurse, I said, Well, what can I do? And she said, You need to start pumping because your milk is going to be so crucial and critical for her um recovery, you know, to to get better. So I dinged the nurse and said, hey, you need to help me because I don't know what I'm doing. Well, they brought in a hospital pump and this was on wheels, okay? Um, <laughs> had I known, I would have had my mom go down to the grocery store and buy me a pump had I known what I was in for. So they bring in this huge machine on wheels. It pumped so hard that my breasts were producing three times the amount of milk that I should have been producing because this hospital pump was so fierce, okay? It was just massive and it completely destroyed my breasts, completely destroyed them. Of course, I don't regret it because she got the milk, we put it on dry ice. Uh, when I finally was able to get out of the hospital after surgery and the C-section and all that, drove straight to the hospital, had that milk on dry ice, and they told me that she was gonna be in the hospital for like two or three weeks. I got there with my milk on a Saturday and she was released that Monday. That milk, was just nothing short of a miracle, right? So I don't regret it, but when I um, finally, when my milk finally dried up, let's just say that my breasts look like they had been <laughs> through a tornado and back. They were terrible and I was 23 years old and I was like, I gotta get these fixed. Like, what am I gonna do with these breasts, right? They were terrible, you guys. Like, they were so bad. They were so bad. Even my plastic surgeon at the time admitted that he had never seen breasts so trashed from breastfeeding and a pump, okay? Right after my milk dried up, I had enough milk to last me for six months after my milk dried up. That's how much that stupid pump. It was bonkers. Anyway, long story, sh long story short, I had my breasts fixed. I had a full lift. So when I had my breast lift, I am now... 60% real tissue, 40% implant. So there's an implant behind and then I have real tissue in front. Okay, so when I go to get a mammogram, you know, over the years, this was, you guys, this was 19 years ago in May when I had this surgery. Um, and they still look great. Like I don't really wanna do it because my breasts look great. They're not saggy. They, what I love about them is they look natural. I don't want like cantaloupe breasts that are like up on my chin, right? I have had a few lumps, okay? They're not cancerous lumps or anything like that, 
but I've had a few lumps that I've had to go in and get a mammogram to make sure that they are not cancerous, that they're benign. And when I went in to get a mammogram, my breast tissue in the front is so dense that the mammogram can't pick it up. And they're smashing your breast in that machine. <laughs> They can't see the lump. They can feel it, but they can't see it in the mammogram because of the breast tissue. So therefore, I have to have an ultrasound done, and the ultrasound is so painful, and I end up getting bruised. So they like tie your hands, like they don't tie your hands, but they, like, they make your hands like stay back, and they press as hard as they can with that ultrasound. You guys, it is so painful. I can't, it, it, it takes it to another level. The mammogram is bad. The ultrasound is a thousand times worse because they have to push really hard to make sure that you don't got cancer, right? So it's super important. So my point with all of this is every time I've went in to get checked, the radiologist said, you have got to do something with that, bre that dense breast tissue. Your breast tissue is so dense that if you had cancer, it would go, it could be undetected. Um, and he's just like, it's not safe for you to have this dense breast tissue. It's just not safe. So, you know, this has been going on for about six years, um, five to six years I've been dealing with this. Something that I've just kept putting off and putting off and putting off, not wanting to deal with it, not wanting to deal with it. And this last time I was just like, I've got to do something. I can't keep doing this. Um, it's not worth it. It's not worth your life, right? And if I have this breast tissue that could potentially cause me to not know if I had cancer or not, that's not smart to keep it. So it's something that my husband has been bugging me about, my mom, my children, like everybody has just been like, you guys, you need to do something with this. I've been putting it off long enough. So I finally found a plastic surgeon because the plastic surgeon that did my surgery the first time, he unfortunately has passed away. He was one of the best here in the state of Utah. Uh, but unfortunately, he has passed away. So I found a new surgeon. He's down in Linden. And he's he kind of specializes in re implant revision or something like that. I can't remember exactly the terminology of what they call it. But so, like I said earlier, right now I am 60% real breast tissue, 40% implant. I have a saline implant in the back, meaning like behind the muscle. So I am going to be having all of that removed. I'm gonna have the old implant removed and my breast tissue removed. I'm gonna be like 85% implant, 15% real tissue. The real tissue will just be kind of around the nipple so that, you know, you don't lose the circulation. So you have to have something around that to keep the circulation to the, you know, um, but the rest will be implant. What I'm afraid of is that I am 42, going to be 43 in May. What I'm afraid of is that I don't want big cantaloupe tits. <laughs> I don't want it. I am. That was the first thing I said. I, you have to know this, please. I do not want these big balloons. Don't want it. I want something that's very natural. I want something that is very looks natural and yeah if I come out with balloons god help the surgeon because I will lose my mind because I don't know how much more clear I can be with I don't want cantaloupes on my chest I don't want them to look fake I have a appointment with my surgeon um at the beginning of, of March but my surgery date is May 16th and we are flying to Florida the weekend of Memorial Day. So my surgery is the 16th. So 12 days later, we fly to Florida. First, I asked the surgeon, I was like, hey, that's really close to my Florida trip. And he was like, you know what, you'll be fine. As long as you're not um, pulling luggage and lifting luggage and stuff, you just can't do any of that, which my husband's going to hate that because I pack a lot, but I'm one of those that packs a lot, but I also pull my own weight, right? So if I'm going to pack the kitchen sink, I'm going to carry the kitchen sink. I don't expect everybody else to carry the kitchen sink. <clears throat> My mother does that. It drives me nuts. My mother packs way more than she needs and everybody has to help her. It drives me batshit. So I'm not that way. Um, but yeah, I'm a little nervous about it. I'm not going to lie. But it is what it is. I haven't had surgery for a long time since my hysterectomy, actually. Um, so I'm a little bit nervous about it, but I do feel like I've made the right decision 
as far as my surgeon goes. I did a lot of research on it. This has been a five-year discussion, um, and I'm finally just doing it. Uh, I just, it's just not smart, especially with my grandmother having breast cancer. Yes, hers was hormonal breast cancer, which typically isn't hereditary. I just, it's just not safe. It's just not safe for me to be taking those risks. So, <sighs> wish me luck. And I think I'm going to use this new NARS palette that I picked up. And I was really excited to see this palette back in stock because I've heard so many people have loved this NARS palette. This is the Climax palette. This was one of the last conversations that I had with Mel. Not, you know, within the last month before she passed, we talked about this palette and how much she loved it. And she's like, it's been sold out. It's been sold out for a minute, but if that palette comes back into stock, Tara, you will love it. Cause she knew how much I loved the Skin Deep palette. So when I saw that it was available, I was like, it just, it triggered that memory of she and I having such a laugh about the NARS palette. And I immediately grabbed it and I'm kind of excited about it because this is actually a really beautiful palette. Um, looking at it, it is really, really beautiful. It's much prettier in person and the shades are just really um, complimentary of one another. And I think because of that conversation, she's like, Tara, it's my new favorite NARS palette. Um, she loved the Skin Deep like I did. And um, she was like, it's my new favorite NARS palette. Like they brought it. Like we were just laughing about it and having such a great time talking about the new NARS palette. And I missed it. I don't, I just wasn't appealing to me. And I think it was the red packaging that I wasn't like super, I don't know. Anyway, so we're going to be using the Climax palette today and I'm quite excited about it. I am just loving this green. And I think this color is so unique. It's not a color that you see in a lot of palettes. I'm just going to stop talking. Let's just jump into it. So that's kind of an update on my life, you guys. It's been kind of a crazy couple of weeks, but I'm so excited to be back and feeling better. I'm going to mix a little bit of this pink with it, too. I'm just going to grab. I'll probably mix these two back and forth in the crease and then kind of work from there. Anyway, but, you know, my husband got it first and we didn't really know what it was at first because it didn't really have all of the signs of what what you hear, you know, the COVID symptoms. Um, so we didn't actually know it was COVID in the beginning. Um, and then it just started rearing its really, really ugly head. And then we were like, wait a minute, this is, this is something different. Um, I've never really had this before because I think that for me, what was different about COVID versus like just the regular flu is it lingers and lingers and lingers. Like with the regular flu, you know how you will have like two or three days where it's just, oh, you feel so crappy. With COVID, it's days. Like for me, it was like six, seven days straight of just massive, massive pain and feeling like crap and, you know, body aches and you know, I didn't have the fever very long. It was only like like two days of the fever, but the body aches were horrific. So anyway, um, I would say it's definitely no joke. <laughs> it's definitely um, different than the traditional flu. At least it was for me. It was definitely different than like a traditional flu that you're used to. Um, it just, it lingers and lingers and lingers. And then you're just like, when is this going to be over with? I remember telling my husband like every day I would wake up hoping that I would feel good and I wouldn't. And I'd be like, when is this going to go away? I just wanted to go away. I just, I wanted to get back to my life so bad. And I just was so dramatic about it. And people would ask me, how are you? And I'd be like, I have this and I have this and I have this. Like I was so dramatic. Um, it was really cute. Tanya, um, Wells, she's the sweetest. I love her. She has a YouTube channel and she reached out and she's like, Hey, I was just checking on you. Like, how are you doing? You know, of course she didn't know cause I hadn't really told everybody publicly. And, um, I was like, well, I have this and I have this and I have this. And I'm like making this whole long list of all of and she's like, I, I know it was TMI. I have <laughs> 
<laughs> I know it was TMI, but it is what it is. You know, I was uber dramatic. <laughs> you know, when you're sick, you just feel like, by the way, I just dipped into the darker color, um, the darker matte on the bottom row next to the green. <laughs> but you know, when you're sick, you just feel like you're like, your life is just completely ended. I'm going to dip into the lighter color and then use the lighter color to kind of buff out these edges. Okay, so this is kind of taking another level, but I think once I clean this up and then add some dark here on the outer corner, it will all pull together. So what I'm gonna do is before I start fixing it, I am going to dip into this color right here. I am gonna go into it dry first with my Smith 253, and I'm going to kind of blend this in Oh yes, that shade is so pretty. Look at how beautiful that shade is. It's just like gorgeous. When you haven't played in makeup for a minute and then you start playing in it again, it's like, I don't know. It's like you feel like you're a kid playing in your mom's makeup. I don't know, I can't describe it, but it feels amazing. Actually, it really wasn't my mom's makeup I used to play in, it was my grandma's. My grandma had the best makeup. She was like one of those that was, you know, she had the boots and the purses and the clothes that all matched. Like her belt, boots, and purse would all match, right? Um, and she was the best dressed. It was, a, I grew up in the smallest little town and here she is like the hot chick, you know what I mean? And um, she would take four hours to get ready just to go to lunch. She was just one of those that you just have to wait on and wait on and wait and wait and wait. She just drove me crazy with the waiting. And now I, I feel like as I've gotten older, I don't have the patience to wait for people. And I don't like being late. I do not like being late. I, I feel like when you're late, you're disrespecting people's time. And it's like a weird thing for me. Now I'm going into that like dark plum color on the bottom. So... Anyway, um, I used to play in her makeup all the time and oh, I loved it. She had the best makeup. I went into this color. Now I'm gonna grab this color with the same brush and I'm gonna put it like right here and kind of blend that rose gold kind of into that dark, you know what I mean? So my eyes are looking a little ridiculous, but it'll pull together. I'm gonna go ahead and put some concealer on. I'm gonna use the Kosas. I have been wearing that new KVD and I'm so excited to share my thoughts with you guys. Um, so again, I wipe off the applicator. I think it's important. A lot of you guys know I do this, but I think it's important for, for maybe new viewers that have never seen me apply concealer. I don't want you thinking that these 42 year old under eyes can handle that much concealer. And so it looks like I'm applying so much because I'm using the applicator to draw it on. But because I've wiped it off, not much concealer left on the applicator. So I feel like I have to make that clear. And I probably do need, I need some uh, corrector on this side for sure. My, I will say that was one thing that I noticed when I was sick was how dark my under eye circles were. This is like the first time in my life that like my dark circles were really dark when I was sick. Um, you know, that, that comes with age, right? Um, when you get, why did my camera go so bright? When you get sick, certain things will really come out and that is what happened with my under eyes. They were so, so dark. This is a nice concealer. It's a nice hydrating concealer that will help you kind of cover up some of those crazy circles you got going on. Okay, now I'm gonna move to the lower lash line. I'm gonna go into this shade and bring that like right here. Color is so pretty. I'm gonna wipe the brush off and then I'm gonna go into that dusty mauve like pink color, the lighter one, not the dark one, and kind of blend it out with that color. Oh, it is so pretty. I have not had eyeshadow on in a minute. It feels like I'm like a different person. <laughs> So weird how that does that, right? I'm so happy to be back though. I'll be honest with you, I missed YouTube so much. And you know, that is when you know, I've done that a few times, like when I've went on vacation, you know, for a month and I've been off, you know, not filming and stuff like that. That is when you know that you're doing what you 
love because I missed it. I missed the communication and I missed having that um, dialogue. I just, I, I love it. I love, love, love this platform. And, you know, even though, you know, some people do it, you know, become these huge YouTube stars and, you know, I, obviously I, I'm not trying to be a big, you know, big YouTuber. It's just not my, you know, if I, if I, if I took it serious, I could probably do really well, but I just, oh, I just messed that up. <laughs> this is what happens when I talk and do stuff. I make a, I, I goof. Um, but for me, it was, for me, it's more about sharing a passion and, I just, I love it. You know, this color might be a little too light for inner corner highlight, but we're gonna go for it. Lashes are on, let's move back to the face. I went ahead and threw on these earrings. By the way, these are not real Chanel earrings, but they are real Chanel buttons. So there is a shop on Instagram created by Sydney. She is amazing. She has the most beautiful jewelry and she refurbishes buttons. It's brilliant. So anytime you see Chanel earrings, Chanel necklace, it's not technically a real Chanel earring necklace. It's buttons. They're real Chanel buttons, but they're just refurbished and made into jewelry, which I love because I got a nice, beautiful pair of Chanel earrings that I paid $75 for versus a thousand. It's brilliant. I will link her Instagram and her website in the description box down below. Fantastic, beautiful jewelry, beautiful person, gorgeous soul, just love her to death. Let's move on to this. This is from Makeup by Mario. This is the uh, cream blush in the shade Soft Coral. So I think I'm going to use this first and then put a powder over top. I love blush. <laughs> when I was sick, I'll be honest with you, when I was sick, I wasn't wearing any makeup. But once in a while, I'd go into my bathroom and grab a cream blush that I have in my bathroom, uh, like drawers, and I would put it on my cheeks just to give myself <laughs> some life. <laughs> I was just like, I just want to have some blush. <laughs> oh. Only me would care about blush during COVID, I swear. I'm gonna go over it with a powder blush. I'm gonna use this one from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the shade Ecstasy. I'm gonna take my Charlotte Tilbury powder with this, with this brush from Wingoss and just tap it right there. See how much more smooth that area looks? And I'm gonna bring it right under here just to kind of clean that area up. See how much softer it looks on this side versus this side? This just like softened everything up and kind of lifted it and kind of, I don't know, plumped it, I guess. I don't know, maybe it's just in my head, but I love it. And I love this brush from Wayne Goss. I hear a lot of people got this brush in their Beautylish box, the extra large box, which is great. By the way, if you guys did not see my update on the Beautylish box, so it was technically my fault. I did pin a comment to that video explaining what happened, um, but it was technically my fault because I accidentally ordered the buy one, give one. So my box was, and, and so basically I paid $150. I got a $75 box and a $75 box was given to charity, which is great. Don't get me wrong. The box, in my opinion, was a terrible box, regardless of how much I paid for it, whether it was 75 or 150, it doesn't matter to me. That was a terrible box. Um, but I'm okay with it now, knowing that another box was given to charity, and to me that was worth it. Um, if it wasn't for that, I would have been ticked. I would have felt like I got cheated. Um, the charitable part about it kind of, saved the day, in my opinion. I'm okay with it now, I am. Now, as far as lippy goes, I think I'm gonna use this lip liner from Christian Adet. This is from Christian Adet, 
and Lisa Duncan. This is in the shade Paradise. This is her latest lip liner and it's really beautiful. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on and then I'm gonna blend it out. They're waterproof. So you wanna blend it out quickly before it dries. If you let it dry before you blend it, oh, it'll be a mess. There's often times that I will put this on the whole lip and then just use a gloss because it's waterproof. Maybe let's put company card on. I love company card. It's one of my favorite shades from Christian Audette. I love this color. So makeup was on. I hope you guys enjoyed this get ready with me chit chat catch up on my life, where I've been. I am back and I'm so happy to be here. It has been a minute and I just love you guys. And thank you for being patient and waiting for me to get well and get back to what I love. And I just love you guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Tons of reviews and lots of videos to come. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me in today's video. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day and I will see you guys all in my next video. Love you. Bye.